My name is Maeve Bracken and I am an assistant professor and lecturer in psychology in Trinity College Dublin but I am also the co-course director of the Masters in Applied Behaviour Analysis. So for those of you that are interested in possibly studying ABA or Applied Behaviour Analysis, um, I suppose we really should have an understanding of exactly what ABA really is. And some people have different opinions about what it actually is, but in, in actual fact, what it is, is it's a field of psychology which is concerned with analysing and modifying human behaviour. So a behaviour analyst will actually spend quite a lot of time basically observing in detail human behaviour, in particular as it occurs in its natural environment. Um, and what a behaviour analyst is interested in is how that behaviour changes when you make changes in the environment around the behaviour. So if a person is having difficulty, for example, in a particular area and a behaviour analyst is called in to help, then what they do is they will observe the person in their environment and they may make modifications to the environment and then they will observe and see what happens to the behaviour when those modifications are actually made. Now, obviously, it's a lot more detailed than that, but in essence, that is really what a behaviour analyst does. And the aim of this is really to change socially significant behaviours for people with the goal of improving some aspect of that person's life. Um, so socially significant behaviours may be uh, behaviours that challenge, they may be behaviours involved in when say, an older person with a disability wants to improve their life by uh, becoming more independent. It might be in using public transport, it might be in gaining education, um, it may be in, in lots of different areas. But anything that's socially significant is really something that where it means something for the person that is your actual client. And it also possibly means something, say, for their other family members. So it really is a very valuable uh, job to be able to do. So I suppose in lay terms then, um, what behaviour analysts do is that they try to make meaningful changes in people's lives through the use of procedures that have been demonstrated to work. Now there are lots of misconceptions about what ABA actually is and I'm just going to highlight a couple of them. So once we describe what ABA is, we also need to describe what it actually isn't. A lot of people think that ABA is only relevant to children with autism, for example. Now, yes, in, in Ireland in particular, uh, a lot of behaviour analysts work in, um, in organisations where they would focus mainly on children with autism. Um, whether that's in mainstream schools or in special schools or in residential locations. In Ireland, I suppose the focus is quite a lot on children with autism and adults with autism. But that's not to say that behaviour analysts don't work in other areas. And I will highlight a few of those areas um, in a couple of minutes for you. ABA, some people believe, is only used to reduce behaviours that are challenging. Um, and I suppose for those of you do, who have had experience of a behaviour analyst in the past, maybe you might only see the behaviour analysts when behaviours get to a point where maybe they are quite challenging and they need an expert uh, to be brought in to help them reduce those behaviours that challenge. Um, yes, that is certainly one area where a behaviour behavior analyst actually is very, very useful, but they also are very useful in behavioural acquisition or skill acquisition. So in the development of educational programmes, for example. So they do work very well in multidisciplinary teams with clinical psychologists, educational psychologists, um, nurse uh, liaisons with GPs, with speech and language therapists, occupational therapists. So they work in lots of particular areas and with lots of different uh, behaviours. Um, another misconception is also that it is only done at a desk. 
Now, yes, of course, some behaviour analysis occurs what, with, a, with a, a person when they're sitting in a one-to-one -one situation and it often does occur at a desk or on a tabletop. But a good behaviour analyst will try to ensure that their programme occurs in all environments so that the good behaviours that are learned at a desk will generalise to all other environments for that person. So, for example, in, you know, when a child say, is walking down a corridor in school, that they are also able to um, point out colours. They're all also able to ha have a conversation with the person. They're also able to answer questions. They're able to ask, um, can they go outside to the playground? Can they, you know, do lots of other different things that they can show at a desk? But these behaviours also need to be generalised to a natural environment. So a good behaviour analyst will always ensure that their programming doesn't occur just at, the, at a desk. And another misconception is that ABA can be done by anyone. Or in other words, if you have done a short course in positive behaviour support or a short course in behaviour analysis, that you are able to actually apply what you have learned to behaviours that challenge, for example. Now, in some cases, yes, of course, this can um, actually work out OK for some people. But generally speaking, um, what you might often find happening is that when they have applied what they have learned in a short course and by chance that has actually worked quite well in the scenario, um, when it stops working or when it doesn't work, the person who doesn't understand the science behind behavioural principles doesn't really know what to do next. And this is why behaviour analysis really um, needs to be conducted by people who are fully qualified in the area. And the Masters in Applied Behaviour Analysis in Trinity College is a professional training course. So we would provide the coursework that you need to be able to get to a certain level in your career and some um, and you also conduct some supervised field work um, and this brings you up to a certain level whereby then you can move forward and once you have reached other qualifications then you can move forward to achieve a professional qualification in um, in behavior analysis so the masters in ABA provides you with that title of a Masters of Applied Behaviour Analysis and that enables you to move forward and to sit further professional exams in the area. So what can we do with ABA or where, where else does a behaviour analyst actually work? Well as I said uh, most people are used to seeing behaviour analysts or behaviour therapists or uh, behaviour specialists in the fields of psychology and in education. But apart from those two areas, you have behaviour analysts who work in the areas of sport, in business, in public health, in gerontology. All of these areas are very busy areas for behaviour analysts. And once a behaviour analyst understands the principles of behaviour in general, they should be able to apply those principles in lots of other areas outside of psychology and education. A lot of the very successful businesses across the universe will use behaviour analysts to help guide them in the decisions that they make, whether it's about a sustainable business package that they are trying to put in place, whether it's how to motivate their employees, um, how to do performance feedback and how to train their employees. These are areas that behaviour analysts are very, very good at. Um, in sports, I mean, I'm sure you have all heard of sports psychologists and this is a particular area where behaviour analysts perform very, very well because they are expert at knowing what reinforces behaviour and how to motivate people and how to put uh, training packages in place. So this is obviously, as you can see, uh, this would fit very well in with, sports package, with a sports psychologist uh, position. The areas of public health, um, how do we motivate people to follow the rules? How do we um, encourage people to, um, to do what they're supposed to do um, to ensure that um, general public health actually occurs 
rather than just working for the individual themselves. So in our recent pandemic, obviously, um, uh, the area of public health promotion was very, very important. And behaviour analysts are very um, skilled at um, using the behavioural principles to ensure that people are encouraged to follow uh, the rules of public health promotion um, and other government initiatives that might be put in place at particular times. Um, and also behaviour analysts, an up and coming area for behaviour analysts is behavioural sustainability. And also, um, you know, in terms of climate change and how we can ensure that we have um, good environmental practices um, to uh, promote the longevity of the planet, I suppose. Um, and then finally, uh, another area I've ha I have hi highlighted there is gerontology. Now, as our population is aging and that aging population um, is becoming more substantial in number, the area of gerontology is, is a, quite an exciting area for behaviour analysts to be involved in. Uh, particularly in the area of health promotion um, in terms of um, how to offset the effects of of um, Alzheimer's and dementia etc etc and there is quite a lot of research con being conducted at the moment in um, into how we can use behavioural analysis in our uh, for long term residents in nursing homes for example and and ha and also as well as that in how to put certain practices in place to keep our elderly population at home for longer um, if at all possible so there are just some of the areas where uh, behavior analysts can work very very effectively um so how do we um ensure that you will learn what you need to learn in our Masters in Trinity College Dublin to be able to enable you to go into one of those positions eventually in your career if that's what you would like to do. So we try to cover everything in the modules in year one and two. The, the course is a two year course and um, it is a full time course, although it only takes place one day per week. But all over the two years in year one, we look at we start out, I suppose, by concentrating a lot on the science behind behaviour analysis and the philosophy that underpins all of that. And it is essential that you gain an understanding, a deep understanding of the science and the, of the basic principles, because this is what carries you forward in times of difficulty when you become a behavioural analyst yourself and when you're putting behavioural interventions in place and when they don't work for you you go back to the science and if you have an understanding of the science you should be able to put an effective program in place. Then also um, we spend a lot of time concentrating on how how to teach you how to um, specify what target behaviours you might be interested in in how to observe those uh, behaviours in detail and then how to measure those behaviours. There are specific practices that we would put in place in order for you to be able to do all of that um, to gain an understanding of what the behavioural issue is at that point in time and then also to be able to carry out functional behaviour assessments and to pro put the appropriate behavioural interventions in place. So we spend a lot, most of our time in first year on those um, areas um, and then in second year, we concentrate a lot on your research dissertation. Every one of you in second year is required to conduct a piece of independent research um, with the help of a supervisor. And, um, and, you know, we aim towards publishing those dissertations if at all possible. We certainly would encourage students to write them up in such a way that they are nearing publication quality. Um, so a lot of people are quite um, excited by that, um, as they should be. Um, and then in uh, the rest of year two, we also concentrate on the ethics of being a professional behaviour analyst and also conducting research in behaviour analysis. There's a lot of emphasis on that. It's one of our bigger modules um, across the two years. Um, and then we also do other uh, modules in supervision and personnel management because we are aiming that 
or we are hoping that the people who graduate from the Masters in Applied Behaviour Analysis will become leaders in their chosen fields. And um, this module in Supervision and Personnel Management is aimed towards ensuring that you become good supervisors, that you become good leaders, and that you are given the skills to, to um, promote good work practices no matter where you go and to be able to provide good performance feedback to your staff or to people that you might be supervising, etc, etc. So that's also an important module in second year. And then we also do a module called Advanced Philosophical Underpinnings, where we will look at other areas, up and coming areas of behaviour analysis that um, stem from the science of behaviour analysis but I suppose would uh, provide us with a broader perspective of how behaviour analysis is a relevant uh, science in the 21st century. So that's in a nutshell really what we do across the two years. Now the course commitments um, for the two years, it is a two year course as I said and it is a full time course. Despite it being full time, you are only in class one day per week throughout the year. In first year, the classes occur um, every Thursday and they occur on campus. Um, and you, So you are required to be in from 9 until 5 or 5.30 each Thursday. And you so occasionally there might be recorded sessions that will be um, sent to you on Fridays and this is extra information. You don't have to be on campus on Fridays, but there may be online recorded sessions on a Friday. Um, and you are also required to conduct 100 hours of supervised field work, which I will go into in a little bit more detail um, in the next slide. In year two, you are required to be on campus every Wednesday from 9 until 5.30. And you are also required to get another 100 hours of supervised field work. Now, although it is, we, are, we are only on campus one day a week, it is still a full time course because of the amount of hours that you put in yourself outside of class time. Uh, the student commitment is quite large on this course um, because of your supervised court field work and because of the amount of reading that you actually have to do to enable you to produce um, a high standard coursework, a high standard of coursework. So it is a full time. It does require a lot of input, even though you're in only one day per week. Now, the supervised field work, you are required to do 100 hours of supervised field work every year. Now, most now uh, the field work site and the supervisor of that field work, you have to independently source yourself. They are not provided by Trinity College. Now, most of our students come in already working in an area, say for example they may be an SNA or they may be a care worker in a residential setting or as in a social care worker, they may be working in special education or in mainstream uh, school settings already and all of these um, work settings are suitable um, and, and are definitely considered to be suitable sites for your field work. And most of our students come into first year with some um, element of that already in place. And, you know, they will discuss with us uh, before they come um, in September and we can advise them whether their current workplace is actually a suitable work site, a suitable site to gain that field work. For those that come in without the field work uh, site, we can um, we can help if, if they can't source one themselves, we can provide some information and we can point them in certain directions where we um, we would be quite um, comfortable that they will be able to gain that, that supervised field work. Um, so the 100 hours of field work that you get each year across the year, say across 10 months, that amounts to 10 hours um, per about it's about four to five hours per week really across the year that you really have to get in placement it doesn't sound like a whole lot and it isn't really a whole lot and to be honest most of our students actually do more than that because they're already in the workplaces now that hundred hours for that hundred hours of field work you have to get five hours of supervision from a board certified behavior analyst and this is the supervisor that you independently source 
um, and we can provide um, advice on where to find those supervisors also. So now to enter the course, there are certain requirements, obviously. Um, and these highlight this this slide highlights the minimum entry requirements. Now we offer 15 places every year on the course. So there is quite a lot of competition for the places. Um, and your application form is very, very important. And you, when you're filling out your personal statement on your application form, we we are quite keen, the, the entry committee is quite keen to see what you write there. So it's important to write a good personal statement and to state why it is that you want to study um, applied behaviour analysis at Trinity College. So in order to gain um, a place on the course, you need a minimum of a 2-1 honours degree in psychology or a related field from a recognised third level institution. Now, the related fields can, can include a broad area um, uh, such as education, special education, nursing, social care, early childhood education, etc. We've had a lot of people on the course from lots of different areas um, and they generally, you know, we don't know from speaking, to, you know, while speaking to from one person on the course to the next what their background actually is. Um, obviously, we have all of that information on their application form, but really the people that end up sitting in front of us in the classroom come from a, a broad array of backgrounds, actually, um, which is great because everybody is able to learn from one another in their particular area. Another um, minimum entry requirement is that you have a fluent command of the English language. And for those of you whose... Um, first language is not English or for those of you who haven't conducted your primary degree through English um, there is lots of information on the postgraduate website of Trinity College um, um, about how you would gain um, uh, a certificate sorry to say that you are that you have a good command a fluent command of the English language so there's lots of information there either from the international office or actually on the postgraduate website um, and when, once you are accepted on the course each um, individual has to undergo Garda or police vetting because you uh, because of the coursework requirements and the supervised fieldwork it's likely that you would be working with vulnerable populations and this is why we have to have you guard vetted or police vetted um, before you before you start on the course. And all of this is organised through Trinity College. So uh, once you um, accept your place on the course, um, you will start getting emails about that from central uh, offices in Trinity College. Um, and then also another um, requirement is that once you're on the course, you have to have membership of a professional organisation. Now, if you are eligible for a graduate membership of the Psychological Society of Ireland, you must maintain your membership in that organisation. And if you don't already have membership of that, you must join that organisation, the Psychological Society of Ireland, if your primary degree is in psychology. If it isn't in psychology, you have to join um, Another professional organisation which is relevant to behaviour analysis, for example, the Association of Behaviour Anal Anal Analysts International. So they are the, um, th that's just a little bit of information about the Masters in Applied Behaviour Analysis in Trinity. If you're looking for a little bit more information about that, please go on to the website, um, the postgraduate website, and you can see the link there, www.tcd.ie courses postgraduate. Um, and that will give you lots more information on the course. Um, so thank you for listening. And I hope to, I hope this has given you a good bit of information. And I hope to see some of you um, in the coming year. Thank you. Mm -hmm.